Um, the other interesting point that you brought up is a lot of people have heard about vitamin E um, mm -hmm. and maybe have even heard from a lot of folks, you know, these are some old studies that potentially even supplementing vitamin E may do ha more harm than good. Um, but I think you're bringing up an important distinction between the different uh, forms, there's probably eight forms of vitamin E. So can you explain a little bit more the differences between the tocotrienols and the tocopherols? You mentioned different plant-based sources have different balances of it, and this annatto has the pure balance, the pure tocotrienols. But uh, how should think people think about the differences between these forms of vitamin E and like what are the different functions essentially that they have? Okay, then a good way to explain this would be this. If you think of this uh, like a sperm, it, it, the picture here is not so good. The, this is a head. Just think mm -hmm. of this as a big head. So this would be the antioxidant head here. Mm -hmm. And then it carries a tail here. The tail of a vitamin E, if it's a tocopherol, the entire tail here is saturated. Mm -hmm. That's a tocopherol. A tocotrienol, the tail will be unsaturated, meaning it contains double bond. But the antioxidant is here. This vitamin E molecule is actually unusual, especially crafted by nature. So it fits perfectly into a phospholipid. Phospholipid are this, the membrane cell wall. All membrane cell wall are like that. They are phospholipid, the phosphate group sticking out, the phosphate group here, and the tail will be the fatty acid all around the cell like that. And then the tail of the phospholipid of fatty acid, they tend to be oxidizable. And then you have a, a vitamin E molecule there because the vitamin E molecule also have the OH group sticking out here. And, the, and then the, the tail here. Now, when it is a tocopherol, it doesn't have the double bond. So the tail is longer. So mm -hmm. it is actually anchored into the membrane deeper. So therefore it moves around the cell slower to mm -hmm. capture oxygen radical. Mm -hmm. But if it is a toco tri, you know, the tail is shorter, anchored mm -hmm. less deeply, and it flies around faster. Professor Lester Packer, who have since passed away, and UC Berkeley in 1990, 1975, 1995, sorry, he discovered using electron spin resonance to find out why tocotrieno is so efficient in capturing free radical. And he found out that it spin essentially 30 to 50 times faster. And for that reason alone, it captures free radical better. Mm. I happen to have a molecule here. This is a molecule of, of vitamin E tocotrienol mm -hmm. on the ring side. Remember I told you it's a ring. That's an OH group. That's a phenol ring. It has to have this uh, OH group here next to a phenol ring to be, to be an antioxidant. This oxygen here is in the ring, so it's a not efficient, not an antioxidant. I also mentioned the tail. I purposely go off screen so you only see the tail. Mm -hmm. If you look carefully at the tail, it has three double bond. My, my pinky here is pointing at one. If I rotate it around, you're going to see two more other double bond. See that? Mm -hmm. So because of the three double bond, it's hence it's tri in three double bond. If you remove those three double bond, this whole thing will become tocopherol. If you mm -hmm. stick in the three double bond, then that three double bond would be a tocotrienol. Now, mm -hmm. while I'm still at it, I steal the thunder here. If I purposely show on screen, Mm -hmm. show on screen here you see that the ring here i'll yep. just block the ring here this 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 part here with that ring disappear that is gg mm -hmm. that is jaranol jaranol the plant use jaranol jaranol to make toco try you know cannot be making the human body only the plant does that and so you you see me talking about gg after so the mm -hmm. whole gg is collapsed into the ring and then one last thing I know, I'm not stealing this away from you. In the, and then I'm not going to bring it because the molecule is so big. See the yeah. molecule on the back table here, my thing is pointing. Th mm. This is a CoQ10 molecule. It's, right. got, it's got a ketone group here. Look at the tail. If I move my pen from here to here, that's already one GG molecule. Mm. I move on to here, another GG molecule. And then I'm not doing it right. And then the acid. So the whole tail of GG contained two and a half, almost three GG molecule. All that to say, CoQ10 remarkably is synthesized in the human body. And remarkably, it is so fat soluble, which is why when you take CoQ10, it's mostly 
unabsorbed. That's why people keep mumbling again and again how bioavailable is your CoQ10. So this is it. So if you take GG, GG will make this molecule in your body. So mm-hmm. there, there you have it. <laughs> That's a, yeah, it's great, great chemistry lesson so that people understand that uh, geranyl geranol essentially is a building block for, for many important compounds, including ubiquinol or coenzyme, the active form of coenzyme Q10 and these uh, tocotrienols, this special form of vitamin E. And I, I appreciate your answer about that. It's much more efficient at sort of reducing the free radicals uh, and the damage that they cause.